right. Um, I'll be short. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, Google Analytics in the app and about this module. Uh, it's written by Ben Lavender. That's your secret tips or? No, no, he works for um, Price Waterhouse School. Ah, okay. It's a consultant for um, companies that have used the technique. So he writes modules that, well, actually, the modules that he publishes are not the, the modules that he uses for customers, but it's the open source version. All right, all right, well, it's perfect. Um, first, let me tell you why not. Uh, these are some. Reasons you should not use this should not be an argument for implementing Google Analytics. It can be fun, but uh, they are mostly for for fun and not actually an argument for implementing it. Uh, but why should you implement Google Analytics? Well, for starters, uh, events. It's very interesting to know what users do in your app. So, for example, in our app, we have. Uh, you run through certain steps. It's it's defined in some backend, and it can be like thirty or forty steps, uh, and you can either click on a button or you can swipe. And we're interested in what people do. Uh, this is just some uh, some events from our development version. So I only swipe. And it's just you know click again. Um, but it's very interesting to see how people use your app and not how you think they use it or which pages they see. Um, there's also some uh, uh, accept and expire and cancel and submit start and submit finish, which are all related to submitting uh, tasks to uh, our backend. Basically, it's usually an API call with like 10 photos and a bunch of data, so it takes some time. So it's very interesting to see that we have a lot more submit start and submit finish. That means it has to retry a couple times. Um, Whatever, what else is the behavior flow of the user? These are page views, but it's very interesting to see how people navigate through your app. So in this case, uh, uh, it's hard to see, but the, the first big block is it's called tasks, and then we have details, and then we have tasks again. So people go from tasks to details to tasks. So they go back and forth, which is very interesting uh, to see that they go back and forth and not navigate from there, um, you can uh, see drop-offs. Uh, you can see uh, I have a step one, and I've got the tasks view, not the entire list of more than a hundred different screens to start. Uh, but I just look at the tasks and see what do people do. People do from tasks, uh, and then they give me all the steps and it continues. I only have the first three here. Minus one, zero, one, uh, and uh, I can see exactly what users do in the app. I've got. Uh, you can also filter on app versions, so well, maybe people use the, use the app differently in a different version. It's very interesting. I only have one version here because it's development, but get the idea. And you can do highlighting. So in this case, when people go to tasks for the second time. I'm very interested to see in what path they follow when they drop off. I highlighted here at the drop off, which is about 50% or something. Uh, and I'm curious what, what route people took before they got to drop off. And these are reasons to implement Google Analytics. So you can investigate what your users do and how they. How they drop off or how they navigate through pages so you can improve your app instead of guessing. Because for certain pages, you're uh, probably before you implement the Google Analytics, you know which pages are going to be used most and, like, and which pages are going to be used least. So that's not very interesting. These are interesting things. I have a short, short question about yeah. the previous slide. Um, so there are 32 more screens? Yeah. 33? Okay. So you I can I can expand that and it can show me all of them. So you have an app? Yeah. It has, apparently from tasks you can access like 36 screens? Yeah. Or are they unique for each user? Well they're or? they're in, in, in this point the data is a little bit polluted polluted. Uh, but they can access like uh, there's five tabs and there's certain pages they can reach from the same page, so it's probably around 
12 different views in the go to club. So uh, in this case, it's a bit polluted, but it's uh, it's so interesting. And there's also a route from tasks to tasks to tasks, right? Or no, because it's it's yeah, 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 yeah. This is uh, because I'm highlighting here. Yeah, uh, if you go back, uh, you can see tasks, tasks, tasks. How would that work? Um, I'm not sure yet. Uh, okay. Probably because someone closed the app and opened it up again, and it still counts as the same session. Wow. But it lets you base you. There's some tweaking you have to do yourself. Uh, but so yeah. there's log answers when someone uh, closes the app? Or yeah. yeah. And then it goes like a, as, a, as a session or something, there's like a timeout. Yeah. Exactly. So this is how you can be, like open the page again when you just quit it now. Yeah, when you when you actually close the app. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm monitoring the, uh, the close or close events and, uh, and, and submit the data from there and then the session closes. So uh, yeah, so it's, that's the last page the user visits in that session. Um, I'm also registering timings. Uh, this is um, a view for uh, a specific page, and I'm interested in how, many, how, how long people spend there. Um, as you can see, 60% is between 0.1 and 1 second, so people could go do, through it very quickly. 27% uh, is between 1 and 5 seconds, and so on and so on. You can expand it again uh, to see all the, the steps. So between 1.1. 0.1 to 1, you have 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, and uh, you know, this is that magic. And there's a couple of people that spend more than 10 minutes, or there's one person that spends more than 10 minutes on that page. So that's uh, very interesting because you can do it for every everything you want to know on the time the user spends. You can also do it for API calls. Uh, I also manage the API calls, see how long they take, and I also uh, send either uh, Wi Fi or Cellular with it as a variable, so I know how long it takes on cellular and I know how long it takes on Wi Fi. And this can also be plotted on the map so you can see you know, where the internet is slow. Uh, how? It's very simple. Uh, on here, you can see uh, how I set it up. I implemented a tracking code, um, I put some things in globals so I can access it from everywhere in the app, and a simple page view here. Uh, a timing here and, uh, and some events here, and that's basically it. Is this working on, on iOS too? Yeah. And my next question is: Is it allowed by iOS? Is it, is it legal? I think uh, I haven't looked into the legal aspect. It's legal, but uh, I haven't looked into if you have to. I think you have to legally uh, give them an opt out. Okay. Uh, this module has a method. Of That is somewhere on the below in some settings, but people don't talk about it. <laughs> and, and basically now it's 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 uh, it's tracking every single uh, event that you that you listen to. Yeah. In the entire app. So yeah. So 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 I here I make a couple events like uh, the click and the swipe, uh, and I also the same thing for next, and uh, and you can set uh, the dispatch time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They include the dispatch, which is the is amount of seconds you want uh, to submit it to Google. And there is also a, a function to dispatch it right away, which is handy when you when the user closes the app. Yeah. I didn't add that. One of the problems we had with both this and with Mixpan was uh, the definition of a session. Yeah. It's, that's, that's, it's, uh, can you set it somewhere? So yeah, there is a start uh, end sessions. Yeah, yeah good. I, I do here a start session, uh, which is basically, I do this in uh, Alloy TTS. So mm -hmm. I start a session over there. And you can close the session, start a session manually as well. Yeah. So you can say for uh, only when I resume that I start a session, or only when the app boots I want to start a session, everything is up to you. Yeah. So. Yeah, because it can, it can be quite hard because yeah, sometimes your app is being removed by iOS from the background. Yeah. And like, do you still like have an end session? And, yeah, for your, your for our metrics, it was really important to know that. That's, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's, it's probably one of the hardest parts. Too. Is there a stop session as well? There's a stop session, 
Yeah. So you can manually stop it and you can manually start it. And is there like a like a uh, like a time as well that if you not come back before the time it counts as two sessions? Um, there is no building function, but of course you can build, you can build, it. You can build it yourself very easily. I don't know how, how the module uh, if looks at if, if the app builds itself and stuff. How it maybe it says, well, after so much time, I will, I will create a new session. But that's good in Linux itself. Well, because one of the like one of the, the main things I we needed to turn my head around when we use this is that Google actually uh, maps app usage on a web paradigm. So Google Analytics was made for web. Yeah. Now just they're, they're, what they did, they just plotted it to web. So screens are pages, but like, yeah, what is it? Pop-up or a dim layer? Is it a screen? Is it an event? Is it a page? So that, that sometimes makes it yeah. super, well, super, for me, you, super. When you create a new property in Google Analytics now, I don't know what it was in the past, you can choose either it's a web page or an app. Uh, and mm -hmm. the interface changes based on that. But okay. you still, I mean, if you show pop-up, uh, you, you still have to think for yourself instead of page view yeah. or instead of an event. But that's the same if you have a, a web application. Yeah. I mean, it was made for traditional websites where every yeah, yeah. Then page of course request it's the same, but it still needs to. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, what we had is that uh, the, the time in the screen it stops when you call an, another screen. But sometimes you have this, you have a, like, with web pages, you load a new page, but with yeah. apps, you have a stack of screens. Yeah. So if you go back, it doesn't like, take it back to that screen. So yeah. you have to, like, if you like load it in a navigation controller, you load it in a screen, and you push back, you have to put, send the event that that screen is visible again, again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but that's that's the, just like the, 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 the page views or the, the uh, how do you call it? Uh, screens. The screens. Yes, you have to you have to do that manually. Yeah, so it's it's a, so you should hook it up to some kind of, like of some kind of focus event. Yeah, but we like we start didn't like start out with that, so like, like you know the whole analytics just got completely screwed. And, yeah, like, so it's uh, you have to be very careful with this. Uh, yeah, how you, you need to think and make choices yourself. Yeah, and, that and see yeah, how and, and, it, and then, the then uh, it doesn't it just. We want to be it. Okay, if a window is open, then a window controller. And if the window is open, just call that event. But it's just not it's not that simple, unfortunately. No. So, that's, uh, so there's just this is for us. It was way harder than we thought. Yeah, it's very difficult. Does it save all all, all things uh, when offline? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. It does the dispatch now. Does the dispatch oh, time? Yeah. So it doesn't but, save but, it. But if it does, it, it isn't able. If you don't have internet, then it will save it and send it when you when you call. Yeah. And and then, and again, like this analytics, for for me it was just all magic because we had two we had mix panel and this and, and actually the statistics were off. Like we were like we were like thirty forty percent something. Yeah. So so what happens there? And then you have like you have your Facebook SDKs also tracking users and events and. Then like this one was here, that one was there, that one was there, and you think, okay, just pick the highest one and then we'll report that to our investors. Apple's just releasing the analytics as well. Yeah. 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 So that, I, don't, I think it's in app analytics. It's analytics of sales. Yeah, it's ah. analytics of the, the app store. You can see how many views yeah. and stuff like that. And what apps also install it right now. Yeah, actively install it. Yeah, that's new. There was this one. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 that's really disappointing for a lot of people. Yeah. 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 I mean, there was always a difference between Android and it had these like actual installs. Yeah. And then on iOS, oh, well, we have tens of thousands of installs on iOS. Yeah. yeah. Over time, yes. 